Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start. My name is Melissa Castro, I'm a nurse practitioner here in Orlando, Florida, and I'm really excited to be here with you guys to talk about healthy habits. So a little bit about me. I've been in the medical field for more than 15 years and um, I specialize in primary care and medical aesthetics, but I'm an adult gerontologist nurse practitioner. What that means is anywhere from adult to geriatrics, older population, end of life. That's my age group. And I also specialize in medical aesthetics and I'm the founder of MC Primary Care and MC Elite Aesthetics. So we're here to talk about healthy habits, but can someone raise their hand and talk to me about unhealthy habits? Can you give me a few examples of what are unhealthy habits? <laughs> Work too much, okay. So no rest. <laughs> Late night eating, no exercise. Alcohol. <laughs> so a lot of alcohol and no water. And by the way, there's a little quiz at the end of the presentation. So we have a few gift cards for you guys. So whoever gets the questions right at the end so you can pay attention. Okay, next slide. So these are some examples of unhealthy diets. So poor diet, poor diet is junk food, high fat, high sugary drinks like soda, no exercise or limited exercise, especially if you have like a desk job and you're not moving as much throughout the day, burning those calories. Poor sleep habits, definitely sleep is really important for us, right? We're able to recharge for the next day. Smoking, skipping physical and mental health screening. So your annual physicals, your labs, and excessive alcohol use. I don't know who said, <laughs> drinking a lot. <laughs> drinking a lot and then coming in the office the next day. <laughs> okay, next slide. <laughs> so more on unhealthy habits. Um, what are the effects? Obesity. Obesity can also lead to chronic illnesses such as high cholesterol, high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, higher risk of mental health such as depression and anxiety, cancers such as colon cancers, breast cancers. There are certain type of cancers that you're more at risk if you have more of these unhealthy habits. Insomnia, back to the not sleeping, and high stress. We're always on the go, 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 and that leads to a lot of stress. And I don't know if you know what cortisol is. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a stress hormone. Yeah, so when we're really stressed, those stress hormones come up. And when those stress hormones are elevated, it increases our chances of gaining weight, eating more, you're stress eating, you're not sleeping. So being able to control the stress also controls our weight, controls our mental health. So we'll touch up on those healthy habits later on in the presentation. Healthy habits, okay. So one of the number one things as a medical provider that I emphasize is preventative care. Why? Because a lot of the health problems that are caused by our quality of life can be prevented. So what is preventative care? Preventative and routine care helps prevent health problems 
or finds them before they become serious. And how can we do this? By our annual physical and mental health screenings with our primary care provider, it's better to prevent disease than to treat people after they get sick. <clears throat> and these are just some statistics on chronic diseases. So not only are they a burden to our patients, but also to our healthcare system, it's more expensive to treat a disease than to prevent it. Uh, so some examples of chronic diseases are <laughs> heart disease, cancer, chronic lung disease, Alzheimer's disease, chronic kidney disease, and all of these can lead to long-term disability. Next slide. Okay, so going back to preventative care, some, how can we prevent illness? our immunizations. Does everyone get annual flu shots? No, okay. Immunizations, your physicals. When you go to your physicals, you're able to get your lab work um, for high cholesterol, diabetes. If you're pre-diabetic, we can treat that before you're full-blown diabetic. Weight management, high cholesterol, heart disease. There's a lot of illnesses that we're able to prevent beforehand, especially based on quality of life, diet and exercise. Then later on, also colorectal screenings for colon cancer, breast exams for breast cancer, um, GYN exams like your pap smears for cervical cancers. So there's a lot of screenings that you have access to to prevent disease. No, go back, please. So healthy diets. Can someone raise their hand and tell me what is their diet? What does your diet consist of? <laughs> Okay. okay. Latte from home or Starbucks? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Salad is good. <laughs> Okay. Okay. French fries. French fries? Yeah. <laughs> Just one French fry. Yeah. We got to give her a gift card for sharing her diet. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and then if I work my other job, I look like a mouse, but I can use an idea almonds. I try not to eat a lot of carbs at night, but sometimes I'm so hungry that you crack at night. At home. And, oh my god. <laughs> 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 yeah so thank you for sharing your diet we want to give you a nice little gift card for participating <laughs> yes okay so healthy habits a healthy diet consists more of a high lean protein like chicken or steak eggs, more egg whites. If you have higher cholesterol, the yolk actually is high in fat and cholesterol. So if you do have high cholesterol, egg whites are better. Vegetables, obviously any green vegetables is good for us. Low fat, low carb, and a lot of water. So, what? Avocado has good fats, yes. 
So every diet is different for everyone. If someone has more higher cholesterol, then we would want to recommend a lower fat diet. A patient that's diabetic, we would recommend low carb, low sugar. So there's not a cookie cutter diet for every person. Everyone is different. That's why it's so important to know what is your lifestyle, what is your medical history, any lab results, because there's a diet for everyone and you don't want to cut yourself out from the things that you love if you i love rice and beans so i'm like i have to have a little bit of rice so it's about balance right and there's like i said there's a few different diets we have our keto diet a keto diet is higher in fat and protein very very low in carbs Atkins is a very popular diet. The Atkins diet is more protein than the keto diet, a little less fat and low carbs. And then we have a low fat diet, which consists of just lower fats, low fat yogurts, low fat cheese, more vegetables and um, boneless chicken, lean meat, salmon, oatmeal. Okay, so does everyone know what a BMI is or your body mass index? Do you know what it is? What is it? <laughs> right, so go to the next slide. So pretty much it's a number based on your height and your weight that interprets what category you are in, whether you're overweight, obese, within normal range, underweight. And the BMI, which is the body mass index, for adults 20 years old and older, the BMI is interpreted using standard weight status categories. These categories are the same for men and women of all body types and ages. So for example, anywhere, anything over 25 is considered overweight. 30.0 and above is obese and a BMI of 38 and over is morbidly obese. This is an example of, I don't know if it's a man, it doesn't specify if it's a male or a female, but the individual is five foot nine. And then if this person of five foot nine weighs up to 168, that's considered a healthy weight. But this is standard. If you have someone that exercises a lot, has more muscle, they'll obviously weigh more, but will have less fat. So this is just a standard way to just see where our patients are. If you're overweight, then it's easier to target, kind of give you a range of how many pounds would be healthy for you to lose. But it's individualized in the sense that everyone should have an individualized plan if the goal is to lose weight. And going back to obesity, and these are just some statistics from the CDC. In 2017 to 2020, the US prevalence was 41.9% of obesity. But in 1999 to 2000, it was 30.5 to 41.9%, meaning it's increasing every year. And obesity leads to conditions such as heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and certain types of cancers. And a lot of these causes of preventable premature death can be, can be prevented by our lifestyles, by what we eat, by increasing our exercise. And it's also estimated that the annual medical cost of obesity in the United States was nearly $173 billion just from obesity, 
related illnesses. So diabetes, certain cancers, heart disease, all of these diseases are pretty much caused by obesity, right? And then medical costs for adults who had obesity were $1,861 higher than people from a healthier weight. <clears throat> and a lot of people don't think about mental health and how it can call how it can be caused by obesity, but it associated with poor mental health outcomes and reduced quality of life in the US and worldwide. So when you're not having that physical activity, the outlet, when you're not eating correctly, when you don't feel comfortable with your with your quality of life, with your energy levels, anxiety, depression, all of these illnesses, you know, can from not only from obesity, but can also lead to obesity because if you're anxious or depressed, you're, eat, you're eating more, you're not exercising as much. So all of these preventable illnesses, can, not only can they be prevented, but they, it's like a domino effect, right? Stress management. What do you do to relieve your stress? <laughs> Shopping, okay. I love to shop too. Ooh, what do you like to sing? Like what? So no regresa. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. That's nice. That's good. So um, some ways to release stress or just to manage our stress. One of, I think we're always so folk, we're always on our phones, right? We're always so focused on social media and it's good to disconnect. Either put it away at night or the news. A lot of people like to watch the news and sometimes those traumatic events can cause more stress because we're like, oh my God, what is going on in the world? Everything is just crazy right now and it, it causes a stress because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring right because of the media so just putting away the phone having a little more control of what we watch and what we listen to taking care of your body how can you do that so taking deep breath meditating in the morning that's something that I've been trying to incorporate the meditation because my life is busy also on the go, go, go. And sometimes just taking a few minutes and just centering my mind and just taking a few breaths before I start my day, that's been helping me a lot. Eating healthy, exercise, and avoiding the excessive alcohol. <laughs> Also, um, talking to others in your community. Also, some people go to church, that helps them with their stress. So you can find something that works for you. Okay. Sleep. Who gets, enough, who gets about seven hours of sleep at night? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So the CDC or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends for an adult of 18 to 60 years old to get at least seven or more hours of sleep per night. When you're a little older, they recommend a few more hours, but this is the what the recommendation is for this age group. And now we go to exercise. Physical activity can prevent one in 10 premature deaths, one in eight cases of breast cancer, one in eight cases of colorectal cancer, one in 12 cases of diabetes, 
one in 15 cases of heart disease. And this is all just from exercising. And it's also more expensive if you don't exercise. A gym membership can cost you $10, $20 a month. It costs $117 billion in annual healthcare costs just from inadequate physical activity. These are just some of the benefits. It lowers blood, uh, risk of blood pressure, risk of stroke. It improves your mental health reduces arthritis symptoms. Um, it's not on here, but it does help reduce the risk of dementia, exercise. It improves joint mobility. It extends years of active life. So how much physical activity should we get? The CDC recommends 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity. And you can break that up. Like it says here, we know 150 minutes of physical activity each week sounds like a lot, but you don't have to do it all at once. You can do 30 minutes, five days a week. You, I usually recommend three days a week for patients that don't exercise at all. At least start with three days a week and then increase as you're able to at least 30 minutes because exercise is 10 minutes or more of an of your heart rate being elevated right so this is the recommended time frame for um for the cdc for adults obviously the more you do the better it is but this is the standard quiz time <laughs> Let's see who was paying attention. Did you wanna do the stretching? Or after the quiz? Okay. What are three healthy habits discussed in this presentation? You have to raise your hand. Okay, what's your name? Alma. Okay. Okay. And what's a healthy diet consist of? You can give her. <laughs> Yay, good job, Alma. <laughs> yeah, you said water. <laughs> this ball. <laughs> for her latte her morning latte <laughs> okay yeah what are some negative effects of obesity yes what's your name Samira Yeah, anxiety. Good job. See, she was paying attention. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she says she's going to hide it because they're looking at it. <laughs> okay, and the next one. How many minutes of exercise does the CDC recommend? Everyone. <laughs> okay, someone that hasn't. What's your name? Wanda. That's right, 150 minutes a week. Okay. So now we have Miss Rita here. She's a personal trainer. Yes. And we're just gonna get up and do a few stretching exercises. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we can. Yeah. 
You can, yeah. I like these. <laughs> I love these little balls. I know. <laughs> Okay, I was gonna record it. <laughs> okay, so we are going to start with the front of it, okay? Yeah. Scoot to the front of your seat. Yeah, scoot. <laughs> shoulders and we literally are going to bring those elbows up. They're called elbow circles so try to get them as high up as you can. We're going to go for 15 times one way. I'm on four, five, six, six, oh, that feels good. Seven, try to get them up. Nine, ten, five more. Please like four. We're going to sit up straight. You're going to fix that posture. You guys should feel it already. We're going to start going the other way. So turn. One. So you, see, you place your thumbs right here in that little like um, shoulder corner there. Yeah. Five. <laughs> Feels like a shoulder worker, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Getting my sweat on. All right, five more. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to extend your arms. <laughs> Don't like, hit your neighbor. <laughs> So I'm gonna stand up back here. <laughs> so here, and we're gonna go, like imagine there's a wall in front of you. So you're literally gonna just bring the shoulders back. Keep the hips up here. <laughs> like each other. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna just stay here for a little bit. We're gonna come down to 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Ooh, that's well, good. I needed that. <laughs> Popular. <laughs> so you guys gonna have just make some circles, right? Same thing here. You guys have like blood flow and sweat in here? Yes. Okay. So you want five, four, three, two, and you guys can press. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm gonna have you guys actually now I want you guys to scoop to the front. Scoop. Is scoop or scoop? Scoop. So, I want you guys to... Alright, grabbing so the feet here. You guys can extend one leg. I'll stretch one the bend. lower body. Lean to the side on one. So you guys should feel that stretch in your hamstring, okay? Yeah. So extend one leg, so you should be feeling it in the back of your... Can you guys see that? <laughs> right. And you can do these just even... See, just sitting down. Mm -hmm. Oh, because okay. she has a dress. <laughs> Switch legs. We're doing on the other side. So just extend the other. Don't force it. Oh, I Why see those sneakers are cute. I just saw them. Mm -hmm. You guys feel a nice stretch in your hamstrings mm -hmm. right there? Good. And then I want you guys to actually, if you guys can lean forward, I want you guys to just sit kind of like wide like dude right now, like a man. <laughs> and then just push oh, for your back. back in here. So push on the inside of your your uh, knees. You guys feel that in your this area here in your hip flexors? Yeah? <laughs> you guys are so quiet. They got quiet after the exercise. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can be a <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I didn't know we had to work. We <laughs> want <laughs> 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 Coffee gift card. <laughs> 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 right. 
you and feel a little bit better and can take the rest of the day. Yes, thank you, Rita. Yes. Rita, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And if you have any questions for Rita, she, you can ask her at the end of the presentation. She also does virtual um, trainings. Oh yeah, she's my trainer. At seven in the morning, kills me. <laughs> but I do it, right? I have to lead by example. Okay, so this is me. So what do we offer? Primary care services for acute and chronic illness. I started with in, independently with medical aesthetics and I've incorporated primary care because of my, a lot of my patients have asked me for it. And I also um, do primary care as well, practice primary care. So what does that consist of? What we discussed with preventative care, medical weight loss, hormone replacement therapy, vitamin infusions, and then medical aesthetics, anything with anti-aging, we provide all of our patients. And we're located in Orlando, Florida, in Alafaya, and all of my information is in that card on the desk. Do you have any questions for me? No questions? <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> so that's good. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. And it was a pleasure being here. This is a beautiful building, a beautiful hotel and hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Thank you. <laughs> They're on the, oh, yeah, the phone number is on there. Mm -hmm. Right now it's not, but within 2024, I will be. Right now it's a membership based, but the uh, medical weight loss is not, I don't believe it's covered by insurance. Yeah, because it's more a cosmetic but you can always give me a call and anyone here today will get 15% off any services.